Okay, so welcome to Tina O and Mary Beth's like geek out hour. Can we just name it what it is? That's totally what it is. We're totally geeking out on story. We've and got this huge pile of books <laughs> and we're picking out the best sentences we can find. They're the most random books you can imagine and we're just, oh my god, this sentence is so good. Right? So good. So good. We're like, you know, crazy story chicks. We've been at it for how many hours now? About four. four about four hours. We're working on um, we're working on our core story program that launches May 15th. Uh, we've just completely tightened up module one. It's gonna be awesome. It's gonna be so good. Like, can we just yeah, okay. I just you're not you you're, you're yeah, you um, don't even know what you're in for. Yeah, like seriously. Um, and we're having a core story boot camp this weekend called Sentences That Slay. So we're totally geeking out as we look at books going, okay, find a sentence that slays. What's your sentence that slays? And then, and Mary Beth, so what did you start with? Okay, okay this is your this favorite. I love this. Well, it's okay. not my favorite. It just, I found it and it really, really spoke to me. The prettifiers of human passion choose to think that a man who has just watched his true love die is lifted above such ugly things as food, that he is exalted by his grief that his mind dwells exclusively on thoughts of eternity and the hereafter. Ugh. What What's so great about that is because you're like, yeah, but what? <laughs> like you have to know what comes next. Yeah. And I, what I think like, because I'm like, a, I'm a word nut. I'm like, she's connected grief with food. Yeah. She's connected almost, dying yeah. with food. Which, right? which almost seems like, uh, what's the word? wrong it seems wrong <laughs> yeah it's uh it's sacrilege is what it is yeah yeah and, and yet there's the, the not the gluttony but it like it taps into that primal feeling that death does and frankly food can too it's almost like can death be nour nourishing or or grief be nourishing it's like yeah well so. and then that, then it, that begs the question i think we all wonder how do we comfort someone when they yeah. lost someone right i mean some people are really, really good at that, uh, and and I feel like she she has her own personal answer. So I want to, I just want to read. Right. This is not the, the the sentence that comes directly okay. after, but this is what it leads into. Okay. The truth is that most bereaved souls crave nourishment more tangible than prayers. They want steak. What is more, they need steak. Preferably, they need it rare, grilled, heavily salted, for that is the way it is most easily digested and most quickly turned into the glandular whip for their tired adrenal adrenal cries. Oh, right? Like, there's something, who is this? MFK Fisher, MFK one Fisher. of the best, most amazing writers. Mm. She writes all about food. She's obsessed with food and sex. Nice. She's very primal, you know? Like, she, she taps into those very deep parts of us. Mm -hmm. One of the things I, and I haven't read her stuff before, so I will now. One of the things that I love about her style, having only read, this is why it's a sentence that slays, because in one sentence, she shows us who she is, and she says, I see you too. You see me, I let you see me, and I see you. Um, and one of the things I appreciate is that there is no filler in her sentences. Like, every word is it's gooey meaning. right is yeah is, it's rich it's it's like walking into a um what's that there's that bakery like the bakery on east and west hastings um uh i want to call it meat and bread but it's not anyway no it is meat and bread well meat and bread's beside it oh okay All right. but anyway there's that bakery that you walk in you're like oh my gosh like the sugar is just dripping there's like no wasted space in that bakery. she talks about nourishment and her her words are nourishing yeah Mm. Okay, so there's one. I pulled one as well. So basically any chapter in this book, like really, any chapter in this book is um, is a sentence that slays. Okay, first off, he opens the book on the end. Like, slays me right there. Like, it doesn't say introduction. It says the end. This isn't even chapter one. This is before chapter one. Here's what it says. This is Andre Agassi. <clears throat> I open my eyes and I don't know where I am or who I am. Short. I'm like, Ugh. and not all that unusual. I've spent half my life not knowing. Still, this feels different. This confusion is more frightening, more total. 
I'm like, where the hell are we going in well, this? First thing? of all, Tina, that's about six sentences, FYI. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but if you see it in the book, it's like two sentences. I just read those two or those three lines. That's it. But even if all it was was that first sentence, that would be enough. And what was that other piece that I read? From yeah, I like that. Oh I like that other one better. From chapter because one. that brings me to a visual. Uh, yeah. Okay, here we go. I really like. Yeah. Chapter one, Andre Agassi, open. I'm seven years old talking to myself because I'm scared and because I'm the only person who listens to me, period. Under my breath, I whisper, just quit, Andre. Just give up, period. Put down your racket and walk off this court right now. Go into the house and get something good to eat. Play with Rita, Philly, or Tammy, period. Sit with mom while she knits or does her jigsaw puzzle. Doesn't that sound nice? Wouldn't that feel like heaven, Andre, to just quit? To never play tennis again? Again, like one sentence at a time, it slays. Mm -hmm. But I think if I were to pick one sentence out in there, I would say, wouldn't that feel like heaven? Yeah. Andre, or I guess that's like six sentences again. I mean, but that's okay. That's okay. He's he's just a sort of short sentence kind of guy, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, that's about his rhythm. His sentence yeah. rhythms. It's almost like he has one concept that he breaks up into four different little mini sentences. Yeah, which is great, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's that's just a style thing. Mm-hmm. Wow, send it to that way, slay. It sucks you in. Okay, oh. wait. I had one more. I know, I know. We can go on forever. But where's my, where's Thrive? Okay, Thrive. Mariana Huffing. This is where I've determined that <laughs> Tina has something about people stuck on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is the introduction from Mariana Huffington's Thrive. On the morning of April 6, 2007, I was lying on the floor of my home office in a pool of blood. Right? You're like, oh my God, is this a thriller? You know it's not because it's Arianne Huffington, but it could be. Like, it could be anything. Like, yes, it could be. Right? Yeah. I'm lying on the floor in a pool of blood. You're waiting to hear the wee, 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 or, or what happened, right? Yeah. What happened next? So we're just letting you in because we're, you know, we're geeking out here. And, uh, and we just want you to know you're invited to our Core Story Club. Our Core Story Club every month has a boot camp. This particular month, it's all about sentences that slay. And I don't know what next month's going to be. If you guys want to share a sentence that has oh, slayed, yeah, please yeah. do that and tell us why. Yeah. What do you think about that sentence slays? Yeah. You know, Who's like the what, writer, too? What What about it just is like it stabs you and makes yeah. you compelled to read more, to know more, to yeah. enter into that world? And what's the word you hear in your head after the sentence is over, do you hear blah, blah, blah on the floor, blood, but, but, right? Or, and, or <gasps> who? Like, what do you, what do you hear? Because yeah, if you were given piece. only that one little sentence, where, mm -hmm. where would you, yeah, where, where would you, you want to go? It? Where yeah. do you want to go? What are you expecting? Yeah. So and how does it surprise you? Yeah. The answer to that. Is it different? Okay, I just have to like totally acknowledge Mary Beth because you have to know the video is not her friend. And isn't she adorable? Like she is getting so comfortable. Unlike me, I'm like, ah, I'm making funny faces. She's like, you're doing so well. Seriously. <laughs> See, right? <laughs> We're just like you. All right, so let us know your thoughts. Uh, join in on the Core Story Club and uh, let's have some fun with Sentences That Slay and write your damn book. Okay, talk to you soon. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs>